I am extremely, extremely impressed. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton. I'm your humble narrator. Welcome back to another bundle banter. Been just a minute since I've seen you, humble bundle. How you been? Yeah, looking good. All right, super healthy. <laughs> Today, we've got the Playism Anniversary Bundle. And oh my god. It is looking so tasty. I don't think I've ever been this excited. Even the humble monthlies, anything from Fanatical, this this bundle is just off the chain. I'm going to tell you straight up front. So let's go ahead and take a look at the tiers. For $1, you can get Lost Technology, Revolver 360 Reactor, Ace of Seafood, Unholy Heights, Mitsurugi Kamui Hikai, uh, and One Way Heroics. I probably butchered the name of that Mitsurugi game, but that's alright. <laughs> if you beat the average, you can get Caro Blaster, Gakko of War, Madfather, and Liit. And for $10, you can get The Silver Case, Momodora, Reverie Under the Moonlight, Astabreed, Definitive Edition, ooh, and Break Arts 2. So there are quite a few games in here that I had not experienced quite yet, but I was so happily surprised. I didn't even know who Playism was as a developer until this bundle popped up and, and now I'm just so super impressed <laughs> that I'm gonna be keeping an eye on them in the future. So, wow, let's, let's just dive into the games and I guess I can gush a bit more at the end. <laughs> so the first game up, Lost Technology. This is really a diamond in the rough. It's kind of an anime RPG smashed into a total war-like RTS game. It doesn't have the depth of Total War, but it's still pretty enjoyable. The art is pretty nice, and the music is passable, but it doesn't manage to be anything that memorable. I think that the main selling point here is the large variety of leaders and factions. The RTS combat is decent, but the memorable characters and the stories are the real reason that you would play this one. You like waifus? We got waifus! <laughs> On the downside, the UI is just <laughs> a real mess. It's a game straight out of Japan, so that's not too much of a surprise. But included with that statement, I should probably also say that all of the translation for this game has not been completed. About one third of the factions you'll need to uh, stumble through with Katakana Hiragana. But I guess those translation packs will make for some sweet impromptu free DLC for the factions I haven't played. Or something like that. The combat doesn't feature any resources to exploit, which is really a big part of what I enjoy in my strategy games. It feels like a missed opportunity. Gold is just used for buying units. No research, no buildings, just units. Lost Technology definitely has its charms, but it needs a lot of polishing before it can be called a true indie gem. Revolver 360 Reactor. This game is an interesting experiment. A bullet hell shooter that exists in three dimensions and allows you to rotate perspective at the push of a button? As if a regular bullet hell didn't boggle my brain enough. There is a lot to keep track of in Revolver 360, and it feels really intimidating for the first hour or so. I really like the variety of different shots and how their effectiveness differs when used against certain enemy types. It feels like Revolver is being complex just for the sake of being complex, but the experience is manageable if you're willing to commit yourself to it. People who have played a ton of bullet hells will probably enjoy this fresh take on the shoot 'em up genre, but for people who haven't cut their teeth on the genre quite yet, uh, they will definitely not like what they're in for with the reactor. I've been through my fair share of bullet hell shooters, but this game was still a shock to my system. I like that they tried something different, but I don't know if they should have gone so different with it. Not to mention, it can't stack up to the other bullet hell contained in this bundle. <laughs> Ace of Seafood, become a cybernetic sardine warlord and bring death and destruction to all rival sea life. This game feels like one of those fever dream type games that inhabited the Sega Dreamcast. I don't know why it reminds me so much of Seaman. You remember that weird ass frog with a human face? Seaman! I swore for years that it was just a vivid nightmare but it recently resurfaced from my subconscious. And thanks to Ace of Seafood, it has resurfaced yet again. Gameplay-wise, they couldn't be any more dissimilar. Ace of Seafood will have you raise an army to conquer the ocean. Seaman only attempts to conquer your nightmares. The UI and the gameplay in Ace of Seafood feel like a throwback, and for some reason, I find myself just loving it. Cruising the endless ocean and growing your school slash army feels awesome. It's weird and totally quirky, 
and feels like it was just made for the memes, but underneath all of that is a game that ends up shockingly fun to play. Don't write Ace of Seafood off just because it's quirky and looks kind of weird. It's like sushi. Just put it in your mouth. you love the flavor. I promise. Unholy Heights. If Ace of Seafood wasn't enough of an example, I'll tell you right now, with my actual mouth parts, that I have such a soft spot for quirky games. Unholy Heights is a mashup of an apartment management simulator and a tower defense game. During the day, various creatures, skeletons, vampires, succubi, will stop by your apartment seeking to rent a room. At night, human adventurers will stop by in search of glory and plunder. They'll attempt to rob your poor denizens, so you'll go around knocking on doors to try and get available monsters to fight the dirty humans off. Most will come to defense of their home, unless they're at work trying to pay the rent that you've set for them. <laughs> Apart from fighting, you'll need to keep your monsters battle ready by meeting their needs. Buy them things such as plants or CD players to keep them from getting sick and increase their battle stats. The creatures can fall in love and have babies and just live their little creature lives. This game is probably one of my favorites in this bundle just due to how innovative and likable it is. It's not exceedingly deep, but there's definitely enough to keep one invested. Mitsurugi Kamui Heikai 3D Anime Schoolgirl Hack and Slash Sounds like a winner, but Mitsu Hiki Kami Hitsu Uh, this game is extremely short. The story and the characters are weak, and the art style definitely looks nice, but it feels just the slightest bit bland. They definitely didn't take any chances with this game, and it feels a lot more to me like a tech demo than a fully-fledged game. I will say that the combat system feels pretty well done, and it managed to hold everything else together. There are multiple difficulties, easy, normal, hard, very hard, and INFERNO. This means that the game might even be fit for multiple playthroughs if you really enjoyed yourself. For me personally, I think one run was more than enough. I played on normal mode and blitzed through hordes of enemies like the Fist of God. I think there really is a large degree of mastery when it comes to the combat, but I'll be honest and say that I'm not really willing to spend the time that's required in a game that is so remarkably shallow. It isn't the worst thing I've ever played, it just feels like the makings of a good game are starting to bloom, but then the developers stopped watering that idea just as it was beginning to sprout. Sad. One Way Heroics Hey, JRPG time! I knew it was coming. Welcome back, old friend. Come to daddy. One Way Heroics is an anomaly in the world of 40 plus hour JRPG treks because you can sit down for just a 20 minute stroll or, you know, step it up with a two hour journey. The game can actually be tweaked to suit your individual tastes, which is just shockingly amazing. Something I didn't know that I wanted, but I definitely did. Once your adventure is over, win or lose, you'll get points that can be used to get stronger for future journeys. Playism seems to be really great at mashing up genres, and a roguelike JRPG, it just... Ooh, makes me quiver. <laughs> I don't know how I lived without this one for so many years. While there isn't much narrative or dialogue to speak of, I don't really mind that. It just makes the hidden bits of dialogue that are in the game feel kind of like an easter egg. But I can understand if narrative-driven gamers can't quite understand the appeal of this title. Plenty of classes, infinite world to venture through, and endless quests to complete. Ugh. One Way Heroics is going one way, indeed. Right to the top! Bing! Zoom! Right to the moon! <laughs> Heading into the second tier, we've got Carol Blaster. I know my buddy Nico the Legend is going to definitely be interested in this game because you play as a frog. It's a fairly charming run and gun kind of game with a retro aesthetic, and if you think you'd enjoy classic Mega Man a bit more if he was a frog, then Carol Blaster is the one and only game that will do that trick. It doesn't have the frantic energy of most run and gun platformers, which puts me off of it just a bit, but there's no denying that it is an exceedingly well-built title. There is a new game plus with redesigned stages, which instantly adds a big dollop of replayability. The story is there between levels, but it's not really worth dwelling on. It serves mostly to add a bit of humor and character, which helps the game to stand out a little bit among its peers. If you really need something else to send you over the edge and convince you to pick up Carablaster, consider that it was made by the creator of Cave Story. That's right, THE Daisuke Pixel Amaya made this title. 
And obviously this game is safe to buy since it is published by Playism. If you haven't heard the tale of Nicalis snaking the rights to Cave Story, it's quite a rabbit hole to head down. But Caro Blaster isn't Cave Story, so buy it. I'd love to have Cave Story on my Switch, but had to pass it up due to Nicalis being the publisher. What a shame. Gakko of War. What the hell is a Gakko? Global Online Chibi Combat Offensive. Well, seems like an interesting premise. Okay. With a copyright war between Nicalis and Studio Pixel behind us, it's time to jump into a more make-believe war. Yes, interestingly enough, this game is all about kids and their pretend battles. The art style certainly isn't my personal favorite, but there's a fair amount of content to be had. 13 weapon types, 30 enemies, a story that has 21 missions and 3 difficulty settings. You can also customize your little chibi characters you see fit. It sounds like it has some potential, but I haven't mentioned the most difficult part of this game. I'll give you one guess as to what it is. Need a hint? It's in the name. Online. Yep. You're going to be sitting AFK forever, waiting to find a match and actually play some missions. It's a grindy sort of game, which can be fun. I enjoyed hunting down crafting components in Warframe, but in Warframe I'm not waiting an hour plus to find a match. And also, Warframe is free. So don't bother with this game. Go play Warframe. Give Gakko of War away to someone you dislike. This is the only real fart in an otherwise flawless bundle. Madfather, an RPG maker game with- Hey, wait, where are you going? Come back. I swear RPG maker games aren't all terrible, okay? Just sit back down, please. A very solid RPG created with an engine that most people have a poor opinion of simply because the ease of creation leads to a lot of trash coming out with that name attached to it. But To the Moon was an RPG maker game, and it was amazing. Ever heard of Forever Home? That RPG Maker game will blow your fucking socks off. Anyways, Madfather is an RPG with visual novel elements and a little bit of a horror bent to it. It's a very specific combination that doesn't necessarily capture me personally, but the game is not awful. It has multiple endings, characters that make you actually give a shit about what happens to them, and because you actually care about the characters, the game is in a great position to create some real, actual tension. There aren't really any jump scare moments, or maybe my nerves are shot and I just missed them, but suffice to say that it ain't no Five Nights at Freddy's. Thank God. Lee Eat, or Lie Eat. The title is the words Lie and Eat, all smashed together, because this story is about a dragon in the form of a little girl. And she, uh, eats lies. Lead also means small in Tagalog, which is kind of interesting and pretty fitting considering that one of the protagonists is a little girl, but really that's almost guaranteed to be incidental. Lee is a short RPG, whose hours don't even reach into the double digits, but it presents a fairly interesting story. Well, actually three stories. Three parts to one story. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> You'll probably really get into this game if you can enjoy a game that's bite-sized. Get it cause lie, eat. Nah, no, sorry. I'll get my coat. Anyways, <laughs> the little lolly dragon has a human familiar who is a con artist. Obviously she stays pretty well fed because this dude does nothing but lie. The combat in this game is really nothing but standard JRPG fare, but it functions well enough. The story is what really drives this game. It's kind of the opposite of one-way heroics in that respect. A short adventure that infuses some humor and even a little creepiness and leaves one with a good but perhaps heavy-handed moral about the power of lying at the end of things. Headed into the top tier. Tasty top tier. The Silver Case. This was a PS1 game before it ended up on Steam and I hadn't given it a try way back when. Probably because my mom would have flipped her shit if she knew that her eight-year-old little boy was playing a detective game about chasing a serial murderer. This game definitely brought some less than stellar relics from the past with it. Long load times, transitions that are completely unskippable, some less than good puzzles that don't really follow any lines of logic. Failing logic seems like a grave sin for a police game, doesn't it? So what's bad is pretty bad, but not abysmal. But what's good is fucking amazing. 
It feels a bit like Phoenix Wright if Phoenix Wright was on the law side of Law & Order. The story is timeless. You really can't tell that this story was written almost two decades ago. The characters are likable, and because of that, you will try your best to make them succeed. If all that isn't quite enough, then I'll just say that the soundtrack fucking slaps. I'm amazed this one passed me by, but also extremely grateful that it was brought to my attention and I didn't have to miss out on it for another two decades. Amazing job. Momodora Reverie Under the Moonlight The fourth installment in the Momodora series of platforming games actually serves as a prequel. So if you haven't played the other entries, don't even sweat it. Tight controls, a colorful world with stunning pixel art, plenty of interesting enemies and items to discover. Now, the game tries to be a Metroidvania, but it kind of fails on that front because you can pick up upgrades in basically any order, and when you finally do end up snagging an item or an upgrade that is linked to progression, you'll need to revisit areas that you've long since moved past. It feels like a very lopsided way to do things, and ends up neutering the rewards of exploration in this game to an absurd degree. Momodora isn't an absolute must-play, but it still manages to be pretty enjoyable. This game is from a Brazilian developer, and I gotta admit that Brazil is really starting to bring some fire as far as their game development game is concerned. I'm really quite excited to see what sort of ideas future Brazilian developers will have in store for us in the coming years. Astabreed Definitive Edition Ace of Seafood, One Way Heroics, Carol Blasters, Unholy Heights. There were a lot of games in this bundle that I had seen, but written off in the past. But upon being given a chance, they absolutely managed to shine. Astabreed, on the other hand, is a bullet hell shoot 'em up that I have been recommending to anyone who would listen for the better part of a decade. If you're just getting into the bullet hell genre, Astabreed is probably the best possible entry point. It isn't determined to fuck your face in the first level, it'll allow you to get your bearing and slowly turns up the heat until you're dipping and dodging like a pro. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and Dodge! You master the five Ds, no amount of balls on earth can hit you. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. What? Oh. 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 You can take multiple hits before dying, and your shields do recharge a bit over time, which is generous in a genre that consists mostly of one-hit deaths. I also really like that they included a few different moves. You don't just mash the fire button, you've got your blade dash and your specials and multiple weapons to keep things feeling fresh. And if you're into score attacking, then Astabreed can really get your blood pumping. Multiple difficulties, chapter select, leaderboards... Yeah, the replayability is here for sure. I've been revisiting Astabreed periodically ever since it was released half a decade ago. I've recommended it countless times while covering other bullet hell games in various review videos. And I do not hesitate to recommend it to you in this bundle. Break Arts 2! Mech Battle Racing Game? Sounds pretty cool. I don't personally dig on either of those genres, but this one is put together well enough that I didn't turn it off immediately after the first race. There's a good amount of meat on this one as well. You don't just pick a mech and cruise around, you can also customize your mech. Not just the look, but you can also bind part animations to different actions, which is some absolutely mind-blowing type of control that I've never seen before, and probably won't see again for quite a while. It looks gorgeous, it plays like a dream, and it lets you cruise around as a giant mech robot and beat the shit out of your opponents during a race. What's not to like? Well, getting cheesed by the AI, they'll focus fire you to the point of frustration. You can go online for a match that's a bit more fair, and surprisingly the community isn't a complete ghost town, though you'll probably end up just getting brutalized by veterans, but... At least they'll be aiming at other players equally. The controls can be an issue, but for that, you really have nobody to blame but yourself. You slammed all your parts into speed? Well, no wonder you can't fucking turn. Change your parts around and get some handling. I'm surprised by how much I enjoyed Break Arts 2. I think it's mostly the customization, but even the racing felt really cool. I think that's mostly because it leans so hard into the arcadey side of things. Mech battle racing game? A simulator this is not. <laughs> Would recommend, absolutely. So, what do I think of this bundle? I am 
Extremely, extremely impressed. I love just about every single game in this bundle. The only real exception to that is Gako of War, but I'm sure that there are people out there who could end up liking that as well. The $1 tier, it's basically always a killer deal, but instead of like the usual four games, they give you six games this time around for just $1. Oh my god, how can you even compete with that? <laughs> if you crawl up into the Beat the Average, Caro Blaster's super cool, Mad Father's okay, Lee Eat I really enjoyed, um, and then in the top tier, the silver case is just really, really nice. Kind of a look back at part of gaming's past. I think the most interesting and notable part about the silver case is just that it was released so long ago, but still feels like it could have been released yesterday, aside from, you know, the long loading screens and things like that. But the story itself is absolutely timeless, so any writers out there could definitely take some notes on that. Momodora, it's it's pretty nice, you know, it definitely has some flaws, but it gets a pass for me. Astabreed has no flaws, perfect game. <laughs> That's a lie. There are flaws, but I mean, I can look right past them. It is definitely one of the best, if not the best, bullet hell shooters that I've played, and I say that with no reservations. Break Arts 2, total surprise. I thought I would hate it, I'm like, ugh, mech game, but it's not your... your average Gundam shoot 'em up type of game you actually get in your mech and race around and beat the shit out of other mechs during a race. It's, it's really interesting. I love playism and how they mash up different genres and stuff like that. I owned a couple games of theirs. A lot of them I had to get through library sharing and stuff like that, but I definitely will not be writing them off in the future. This is uncannily good. <laughs> I will say that they also have this exact bundle on Steam, uh, named as the Playism Summer Bundle. For me, that's 417 pesos and 66 centavos, which is roughly $8.08 .08 or something like that. So I could buy that, save a couple of bucks if I'm not necessarily looking to pay the, uh, the full 500 there. So I think that's pretty cool. But anyways, friends, that just about wraps it. Pretty long bundle banter. We had a lot of games to get through. But I do hope that you enjoyed it, and if you did, I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe. Check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon, and as always, I'd like to thank my lovely patrons, Mr. Weasel, Lady Nix, Nico the Legend, Crimson Albedo, Dot Nathan, Radimus Cisco, and Damon Darkstar. You guys are the real MVPs, so thank you so much for helping me live the dream, and thank you guys as well for listening along with me here today. We've got a lot more bundles to cover. I'll be jumping back into it. People didn't really seem to like my Pokemon Snap coverage too much. <laughs> it was largely ignored, but it's about what I expected. So we'll stick to mostly bundle content in the future, but I can't promise that I won't go off the rails and like <laughs> make whatever I want at some point. I'll see you tomorrow with the Fanatical Reaper bundle. That one has been hotly suggested in the Discord, so I will start getting that together. I hope that you guys will keep yourselves safe out there. I've been Brandon Dade, your humble narrator. This has been Bundle Banter, the Play is a Anniversary Bundle. And I shall see you in the next one, friends. So until then, bye-bye.